The text for our sermon this morning is the, um, the gospel reading, uh, and particularly um, the woman in verse 25 of Matthew 15. She came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And also, um, the Old Testament reading, uh, this verse, <coughs> everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain. God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon discusses and asks each and every one of us, no matter what crazy things are going on in life, is where do we find our rest? We hear the Sabbath mentioned in our Old Testament reading, Sabbath means rest. So we must ask ourselves, do we find our rest in how good we are, whether it's a, a, a living life as a Christian, or do we find our rest in faith in Christ, that Christ Jesus fulfills all the commandments on your behalf? Because it's a pretty clear statement from our Old Testament reading today. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain. There are no exceptions to God's laws. Remember, this is even one of the third commandments. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. There are no exceptions. There are no footnotes on the stone tablets that God gave Moses that give us an out for not following God's word. We cannot say a little bit of adultery is okay. Even though we Texans cannot drive on ice and snow, there is no end around for remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, unless there's ice. God's law is complete. There was no exception for a pandemic. God knows more than Dr. Fauci. God knows more about viruses. God knows more about cures. God knows more about the faith than any government official. And God says, do not forsake meeting together. God, if he is any God at all, his law is perfect, and any transgression is evil. We now find ourselves in a place of necessary evil. None of us should find comfort in having to avoid gathering together and obeying God's word. That is the question each of us has to examine in our own lives. When are we ready to gather together again? This, as I said, this is a necessary evil, and that's the question of today's sermons and sermon and readings. Where do we find our rest? Do we find our rest in our current situation, thinking everything's okay if I just participate online? No, it's not. We were created to be together. God's word makes that very clear. So maybe it makes a little more sense to us why Jesus first ignores this Canaanite woman's request. The Canaanites were actually the enemy of God's people in the Old Testament. The Canaanites warred against Israel. They killed God's people, and they did so gladly. They were wicked, pagan people who could care less about what the Ten Commandments said. The Canaanites offered their children as sacrifices to their gods. The fifth commandment was of no consequence to them. They didn't even want to be part of God's people. They rested in their own gods. So it might not be so strange, if you think about it, for Jesus to get a little just retribution when this woman comes and tries to ask him for a favor. 
ignoring her? Well, it just seems right. The disciples, though, they see something that bothers them about this. We don't know if they are bothered and bugged that she's around them. We don't exactly know why, but the disciples actually were tired of this. The disciples came to Jesus and begged him, send her away. She's crying out after us. Jesus doesn't even acknowledge her. Sometimes Jesus doesn't always answer our prayers as soon or in ways that we want. Why doesn't Jesus just answer her? Why doesn't Jesus just answer my prayers? Maybe it's even a prayer that we are praying that allows us to obey God's word, to gather together again. We don't know why God doesn't always answer. But we do know that God promises to use all things for the good of those who believe. Whether it's this woman's faith or the faith of the disciples needed to be fanned into flame by his ignoring her prayers, it could be both. We don't know. But Jesus' mysterious behavior has the same promise all things work together for good of those who believe. Jesus very well may be leading this woman to trust him even more. To cry out to him even more. When she first asked Jesus for healing for her daughter, her faith could have still been lacking. She may have yet still considered the Canaanite gods just as helpful or as real as Jesus. Maybe Jesus is just another god. But she might as well try. Maybe her worship of Jesus was half-hearted. Which brings us also to the point that you could attend every church service, every worship service, and yet still in your heart not obey the third commandment. Many times this is why Jesus doesn't answer our prayers. He is purifying your faith. He is stripping away the things that you still trust in. When our prayers aren't answered or something bad happens, we should use that time as a time of repentance and examination. Either the woman, the disciples, but most assuredly the story is for our benefit. Sometimes our faith needs to be built up. For when it seems like God doesn't hear your prayers, indeed he is. The question put before us today in this reading is, is Jesus trustworthy? Or should we find comfort in the gods of this world or comfort in ourselves? Should we just eat, drink, and be merry because, well, we're going to die anyway? Or should we fear, love, and trust in God above all things? When we pray to Jesus and it seems like he isn't answering, I'll bring up the colloquial saying, are we barking up the wrong tree? When pandemics might never go away. When loved ones are dying right in front of us when the diagnosis comes back as not good. When we pray and continue to pray to Jesus, are we just barking up the wrong tree? Now this saying comes from when people use dogs to hunt raccoons and various other animals. When a dog trees an animal, he stops at the bottom of the tree, he looks up and he barks and he howls, letting the hunter know, I found the prey. Sometimes the dog gets tricked and he, he barks and howls, but the raccoon or squirrel has outsmarted him. If you remember that old favorite book, Where the Red Fern Grows, this was a big part of that book. The saying, barking up the wrong tree, comes from when the, dis the dogs make a mistake. The raccoon has outsmarted the dog and the dog is barking at an empty tree. Is this woman today 
Is she barking up the wrong tree? How many trees have you barked up? Where you think you find something great, and yet only to be wrong. How many times have you been let down or disappointed in this life with people or even possessions? Things that you thought would bring you happiness. I'm disappointed with myself often. Mistakes that I just, I should have known better. People or possessions that I shouldn't have trusted. If you're anything like me, you've barked up some empty trees. Trying to find satisfaction, all of us, whether money, health care decisions, an easy life. The Canaanite people were real people, and we have followed the same false gods. God would be right to ignore us. We've even barked and bitten one another. Like dogs barking or chasing anything that promises to build up our pride or give us hope in ourselves. But she came and knelt before Jesus. Saying, Lord, help me. This woman will not be deterred. She continues to bark. To cry out to Jesus. The term that's translated as kneeling, it's not just kneeling. But this is the word for falling down face first in the dust. Lying down in prostration. It's a word used for worship. Laying down, face down. She lowers herself physically and cannot possibly get lower into the dust. And maybe now Jesus will celebrate her. Jesus answers, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Jesus now finally acknowledges her, but not in a way we might be happy to be recognized. As if physical prostration into the dust wasn't enough, now Jesus refers to her as a dog. It is not right, he says. It is not right for Jesus to answer her. This woman never honored the Sabbath. This woman had likely never studied the Ten Commandments. She's a Canaanite. The Canaanites mocked the Israelites' laws. It is not right. It is not right, Jesus says, to acknowledge her. Not just because she's a Canaanite. Because she's a sinner. It is not right. But Jesus does not always do what's right. Meaning, he shouldn't listen to us sinners who too often chase our own tails. We who do not always keep the Sabbath, even if we've never missed a Sunday, we do not rest in our efforts. It is not right. The Canaanite woman who had never kept the Sabbath, she confesses to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yes, you are right, I am a dog. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She calls Jesus her master. She acknowledges she has nothing, but she needs everything from Jesus. She recognizes by faith she has nothing to give, but that Jesus has everything. That Jesus not only has enough righteousness for his chosen people, but God also in Christ Jesus gives enough righteousness, mercy, and forgiveness for an outcast Gentile like herself. She speaks, she barks. She howls in faith. Like a dog whose eyes are trained on that food, that one snack, that no matter what else is going on in the room, the eyes of the dog do not move. Her eyes and her focus 
Her faith is solely in Christ. Despite everyone telling her, move on, go find another tree to bark up, she said no. Even when it appeared as if God is telling her she's barking up the wrong tree, she trusted the greater word of God. She lived by faith and she was ready to die by faith. Jesus is everything. By faith, she found her master who would be caught up in a tree. By faith, she called out. By faith, she would not be deterred. By faith, she fulfilled the Sabbath because she found rest in Jesus. Coming to Jesus by faith is the fulfillment of all the commandments. Because Jesus obeyed God's law perfectly on your behalf. There was no sin found in Jesus. In him was the righteousness of God. Romans 8 says there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. I've considered everything else rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness from the law but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. We do not find rest in the law or us fulfilling the requirements of the law, but in Christ. This is what Isaiah is speaking of when he says, no one who profanes the Sabbath. Remember, Sabbath means rest. So Isaiah isn't just speaking of an outward action, but where do you find your rest? What tree are you barking up? It must be this tree. It must be the tree of the cross, for on the cross, the tree of life, Christ Jesus gave his life for you. For you to find confidence that no matter how dire your life seems, he will bring you through. You must, not, you must trust that at your baptism, God was not lying to you, but promising you that he is your gracious father. He might not always answer how we want, but that doesn't mean we give up. Do not give up. For on this side of heaven, our faith is only perfected when we are found in Christ. And our faith is strengthened by trial and tribulation, by carrying our cross, because Christ has turned all your crosses into ways in which he strengthens your faith. Let this woman be your guide. Let her teach you. Follow her trail. Because she points us to Jesus. There was nothing that would keep her from finding Jesus. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God so that we do not despise preaching or his word, but gladly hear and learn it. Matthew is sure to tell us this woman's outward actions matched her inner faith. The same is for us. Do not be ruled by fear, but pray to God to give you confidence in him to live your life free of fear, to rest in the forgiveness and eternal life promised in Christ. When you pray to Jesus, you're never barking up the wrong tree, for his death and resurrection has turned all your crosses into ways in which he strengthens your faith. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.